4. The Departure Now, sir, young Fortinbras, of unimproved metal hot and full, hath in the skirts of Norway here and there sharked up a list of lawless resolutes for food and diet to some enterprise that that hath a stomach in it. Shakespeare, Hamlet. Foo and lay means after moonrise. Rabbits, of course, have no idea of precise time or of punctuality. In this respect, they're much the same as primitive people who often take several days over assembling for some purpose and then several more to get started. Before such people can act together, a kind of telepathic feeling has to flow through them and ripen to the point when they all know that they are ready to begin. Anyone who's seen the Martins and Swallows in September assembling on the telephone wires, twittering, making short flights singly and in groups over the open, stubbly fields, returning to form longer and even longer lines above the yellowing verges of the lanes, the hundreds of individual birds merging and blending in a mounting excitement into swarms, and these swarms coming loosely and untidily together to create a great unorganized flock thick at the center and ragged at the edges, which breaks and reforms continually like clouds or waves. Until that moment when the greater part, but not all of them, know that the time has come, they are off, and they have begun once more that great southward flight which many will not survive. Anyone seeing this has seen at work the current that flows. Among creatures who think of themselves primarily as part of a group and only secondarily, if at all, as individuals. To fuse them together and impel them into action without conscious thought or will. Has seen at work the angel which drove the first crusade into Antioch and drives the lemmings into the sea. It was actually about an hour after moonrise and a good while before midnight when Hazel and Fiverr once more came out of their burrow behind the brambles and slipped quietly along the bottom of the ditch. With them was a third rabbit, Haleo, Pipkin, a friend of Fiverr. Haleo means any small concavity in the grass where moisture may collect, e.g. the dimple formed by a dandelion or thistle cup. He too was small and inclined to be timid and Hazel and Fiverr had spent the greater part of their last evening in the Warren in persuading him to join them. Pipkin had agreed rather hesitantly. He still felt extremely nervous about what might happen once they left the Warren and had decided that the best way to avoid trouble would be to keep close to Hazel and do exactly what he said. The three were still in the ditch when Hazel heard a movement above. He looked up quickly. Who's there? he said. Dandelion? No, I'm a hawk bit, said the rabbit, who was peering over the edge. He jumped down among them, ran landing rather heavily. Do you remember me, Hazel? We were in the same burrow during the snow last winter. Dandelion told me you were going to leave the warren tonight. If you are, I'll come with you. Hazel could recall Hawkbit, a rather slow, stupid rabbit, whose company for five snowbound days underground had been distinctly tedious. Still, he thought, this was no time to pick and choose. Although Bigwig might succeed in talking over one or two, most of the rabbits they could expect to join them would not come from the Ausla. They would be outskirters who were getting a thin time and wondering what to do about it. He was running over some of these in his mind when Dandelion appeared. The sooner we're off, the better, I reckon, said Dandelion. I don't much like the look of things. After I'd persuaded Hawkbit here to join us, I was just starting to talk to a few more when I found that Toadflax fellow had followed me down the run. I want to know what you're up to, he said. And I don't think he believed me when I told him I was only trying to find out whether there were any rabbits who wanted to leave the warren. He asked me if I was sure I wasn't working up some kind of plot against the Thorera. He got awfully angry and suspicious. 
put the wind up me to tell you the truth. So I just brought Hawkbin along and left it at that. I don't blame you, said Hazel. Knowing Toadflax, I'm surprised he didn't knock you over first and ask questions afterward. All the same, let's wait a little longer. Blackberry ought to be here soon. Time passed. They crouched in silence while the moon shadows moved northward in the grass. At last, just as Hazel was about to run down the slope to Blackberry's burrow, he saw him come out of his hole, followed by no less than three rabbits. One of these, Buckthorn, Hazel knew very well. He was glad to see him, for he knew him for a tough, sturdy fellow who was considered certain to get into the owl's lot as soon as he reached full weight. But I dare say he's impatient, thought Hazel, or he may have come off worse in some scuffle over a doe and taken it hard. Well, with him and Bigwig, at least we shan't be too badly off if we run into any fighting. He did not recognize the other two rabbits, and when Blackberry told him their names, Speedwell and Acorn, he was none the wiser. But this was not surprising, for they were typical outskirters, thin-looking six-monthers, with the strained, wary look of those who are only too well used to the thin end of the stick. They looked curiously at Fiverr. From what Blackberry had told them, they had been almost expecting to find Fiverr foretelling doom in a poetic torrent. Instead, he seemed more calm and normal than the rest. The certainty of going had lifted a weight from Fiverr. More time went slowly by. Blackberry scrambled up into the fern and then returned to the top of the bank, fidgeting nervously and half inclined to bolt at nothing. Hazel and Fiverr remained in the ditch, nibbling half-heartedly at the dark grass. At last, Hazel heard what he was listening for. A rabbit, or was it two, approaching from the wood. A few moments later, Bigwig was in the ditch, Behind him came a hefty, brisk-looking rabbit, something over 12 months old. He was well known by sight to all the warren, for his fur was entirely gray, with patches of near white that now caught the moonlight as he sat scratching himself without speaking. This was Silver, a nephew of the Therara, who was serving his first month in the Ausla. Hazel could not help feeling relieved that Bigwig had brought only Silver, a quiet, straightforward fellow who had not yet really found his feet among the veterans. When Bigwig had spoken earlier of sounding out the Ausla, Hazel had been in two minds. It was only too likely that they would encounter dangers beyond the Warren and that they would stand in need of some good fighters. Again, if Fiverr was right, and the whole warren was in imminent peril, then of course they ought to welcome any rabbit who was ready to join them. On the other hand, there seemed no point in taking particular pains to get hold of rabbits who were going to behave like toad flax. Wherever we settle down in the end, thought Hazel, I'm determined to see that Pipkin and Fiverr aren't sat on and cuffed around until they're ready to run any risk just to get away. But is Bigwig going to see it like that? You know Silver, don't you? Asked Bigwig, breaking in on his thoughts. Apparently, some of the younger fellows in the Ausla have been giving him a thin time, teasing him about his fur, you know, and saying he only got his place because of the Therara. I thought I was going to get some more, but I suppose nearly all the Ausla feel they're very well off as they are. He looked about him. I say, there aren't many here, are there? Do you think it's really worth going on with this idea? Silver seemed about to speak when suddenly there was a pattering on the ground above and three more rabbits came over the bank from the wood. Their movement was direct and purposeful, quite unlike the earlier haphazard approach of those who were now gathered in the ditch. The largest of the three newcomers was in front, and the other two followed him, as though under orders. Hazel, 
sensing at once that they had nothing in common with himself and his companions, started up and sat up tensely. Fiver muttered in his ear, Oh, Hazel, they've come to... But broke off short. Bigwig turned toward them and stared, his nose working rapidly. The three came straight up to him. Flaley, said the leader. You know me perfectly well, replied Bigwig. And I know you, Holly. What do you want? You're under arrest. Under arrest? What do you mean? What for? Spreading dissension and inciting to mutiny. Silver, you're under arrest too for failing to report to Toadflax this evening and causing your duty to devolve on a comrade. You're both to come with me. Immediately, Bigwig fell upon him, scratching and kicking. Holly fought back. His followers closed in, looking for an opening to join the fight and pin Bigwig down. Suddenly, from the top of the bank, Buckthorn flung himself headlong into the scuffle, knocked one of the guards flying with a kick from his back legs, then closed with the other. He was followed a moment later by Dandelion, who landed full on the rabbit whom Buckthorn had kicked. Both guards broke clear, looked round for a moment, and then leapt up the bank into the wood. Halley struggled free of Bigwig and crouched on his haunches, scuffling his front paws and growling as rabbits will when angry. He was about to speak when Hazel faced him. Go, said Hazel firmly and quietly, or we'll kill you. Do you know what this means? replied Halley. I am captain of Ausla. You know that, don't you? Go, repeated Hazel, or you will be killed. It is you who will be killed, replied Halley. Without another word, he too went back up the bank and vanished into the wood. Dandelion was bleeding from the shoulder. He licked the wound for a few moments and then turned to Hazel. They won't be long coming back, you know, Hazel, he said. They've gone to turn out the Ausla, and then we'll be for it right enough. We ought to go at once, said Fiverr. Yes, the time's come now, all right, replied Hazel. Come on, down to the stream. Then we'll follow the bank. That'll help us to keep together. If you'll take my advice, began Bigwig. If we stay here any longer, I shan't be able to answered Hazel. With Fiverr beside him, he led the way out of the ditch and down the slope. In less than a minute, the little band of rabbits had disappeared into the dim, moonlit night. 